Being as you are, pure consciousness, your attention naturally goes in a direction to reflect your being. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. If life does not appear that way, no shame, no condemnation. Release identification by being still and knowing that I am. Pure consciousness, from which we experience pure observation in relation to what appears on the journey to actualizing your vision. To contribute to your journey and emphasize what I discussed today with practical examples, I titled today's conversation mind map, You Observe the Flow. So the observer effect is a phenomena in physics that describes how the act of observation can influence the behavior of a system being observed. The observer effect has implications not only in physics, but also in other fields, such as psychology and in everyday interactions, which I would like to focus on today. This highlights the relationship between the observer and the observed. Now, as we remain in our flow, we acknowledge the experiences of life from the perspective of living meditation. Like we discussed in Tuesday's video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link in the description to it. Lately, I mentioned that I had rolled out a coaching and masterminding opportunity to work closely with me, as well as others who are also on the journey to actualizing their prosperity in a flow-based way. If you would like to know more about the service, I'll link in the description to it. So we have a number of entrepreneurs, sales professionals, career professionals, and one of the topics that we cover often is discovering within our acres of diamonds, because each of us are standing right now on our acres of diamonds, the various relationships, assets, and opportunities that are available and combining them in creative ways to produce business growth, increase operational efficiency, come up with creative solutions to challenges. The possibilities are endless when we acknowledge that we have, although we might not be currently consciously aware of it, Thus, it's helpful to bring awareness to it. We have assets that could be multi-purpose or leveraged or reimagined and combined creatively with relationships that we have access to to produce whatever kind of output. For example, when I had my IT business, one of the services that we offered was a point-of-sale system for restaurants. The very first point-of-sale system that I built was for a bar slash lounge slash nightclub. And the owner and I became friends. And he would run his place a number of nights, most nights of the week. Except, I believe it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. And at that time, he wasn't open. So I asked him the question. I said, why aren't you open on this day? He says, well, there's nobody going out in the neighborhood. And this was even a popular neighborhood in Toronto, the Queen West neighborhood. And at that time, he said, nobody was going out as much at that particular day. And so I said, well, what if we bring people in? And so he said, well, if you bring people in, we could work a revenue split on it. So I had an idea because during that time, it was high leverage for me to connect with other business owners and other members of the various communities in Toronto so that I could build relationships with them and further grow my IT business. So I knew a bartender who wasn't bartending also on that particular night, and she knew a lot of people. So I asked her, if she would be interested in bartending at my friend's place, 
if we could send out a notification to people that she knows on Facebook, Facebook groups, etc. Because what I found is that she had a lot of people that would pretty much go wherever she was going. So wherever she was bartending, she would bring in crowds of people. And I said, in exchange, you get to keep all the tips. Because normally what they do is they split the tips. And I said, you get to keep all the tips. So my friend agreed to it. She agreed to it. And we send out a notification to her list of people that would be interested in doing something on this particular night when they weren't doing anything. And his place wasn't open. And we ended up filling up the place. And not only that, aside from the revenue split and him benefiting, her benefiting, I'm benefiting in that way, I also got to be introduced to a number of business owners who attended those nights. And that resulted in more business deals. So that is one example of combining assets such as real estate, even an intangible asset like a list of people that are interested in something, plus relationships, my relationship with her, my relationship with the owner, in creative ways to produce a harmonious benefit for everyone. Now, one of the things we talk about in our sessions is reaching out to new contacts every day to facilitate these relationships or existing contacts. So, one of the simple ways that I teach entrepreneurs to grow their business right from the beginning, which is what I did in my IT business, and I also did this in my consulting practice, is to create a list of contacts and reach out to them one by one, qualified contacts who would be interested in doing business with you, as well as what can also be included on that list are those that are interested in referring people to you. They have access to people that would be interested in your product or service and work a relationship with them, such as the example given. And so this is how I launched my IT business and built it to success from 2009 to 13, primarily through this very simple and natural, organic flow-based way, which was natural and authentic to me. So this is something that I get brought into in organizations as well, sales organizations or companies that focus on sales. And one of the things that we do is we set quotas. So for example, one that I've set for myself before, and I teach others to set, is five new contacts a day. Now, when applying the observer effect and being in flow, it is important to acknowledge the opportunities during your conversations with people, during your interactions with people. And by the way, this can also apply for your personal life. So these are some keys to keep into consideration because Awareness is key. You are that. You are aware and you are aware of. What are you aware of? You're aware of your thoughts. You are aware of your emotions. You are aware of your behaviors. And you are aware of the environment, people, information, circumstance, etc. You are the observer of the effects. And there is a relationship. And so the question is, is it a harmonious relationship? Here are five keys to consider during interactions with people. Number one, active listening. Active listening is the practice of fully concentrating, understanding, responding, and remembering what is being said in a conversation. Why this is key for the observer effect is because it is what we are relating to the conversation from within that is going to determine what appears next. For example, 
let's say a person listens to another person and the other person appears to, let's say, reject them. They could interpret that as they are not worthy or something like that. And then from identification to that particular belief, which is essentially a belief being brought to awareness to be released, but rather through identification to that particular belief, they begin to experience more of that in the interaction and so forth. When in that moment, that subconscious belief that was brought to awareness in that particular moment could be released by acknowledging that they are the observer of the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Intuition reveals it. We know when we are about to become identified with a belief that is not true and authentic. That is how we practically apply the observer effect, which again, the observer effect is the relationship between the observer and the observed, which determines what appears next. This is how we apply it in a harmonious way so that we can remain in our flow. Number two is body language. Your body language, their body language. Body language refers to the nonverbal signals, gestures, postures, facial expressions, voice tonality, etc., that convey information about thoughts, feelings, and intentions. And so we are aware of our body language. We are aware of another person's body language. And so when considering the observer effect, what we are interested in is our relationship to the current body language, to their body language. And what are we relating to their body language? For example, in my earlier stages of developing my sales and communication skills, it was apparent to me that when someone gave me a particular look, I would identify with a belief that was suggesting that I was not worthy. I was not accepted. Now, this was the belief that was generating those thoughts and emotions and behaviors to reflect that belief. And if I kept identifying with that, sure enough, I would see more of that until I realized that this was a belief brought to awareness, a belief existing nowhere but in mind, a belief brought to awareness. You are awareness. And as you are aware of the belief, you acknowledge that you transcend the belief. Thus, you can change the belief or release identification to the belief or suggest to yourself from the premise of being who you are, being as I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and thus relate to the experiences ideally from the premise of being, which then changes the interaction, changes the experience, and releases identification to that particular belief. Number three is feedback loop. The feedback loop is a process where the output of a system is returned to the input, affecting subsequent outputs, thus creating a continuous cycle of self-correction or reinforcement. So in other words, a belief plays out as theater in the outer expressions of life. And one might not be aware in that particular moment that this is a continuous cycle which continues to reinforce that particular belief. Could be in an interaction with another person. And so when we go back to what I teach about five new contacts a day, I precisely teach doing so from a state of flow 
being as you are aware of if there is a feedback loop. That is one of releasing identification to the untrue beliefs or further identifying with the untrue beliefs. If untrue, again, these beliefs are stored in the subconscious mind. See, if one could remain in their flow, be aware, they would be able to purify their mind instantly. But why is it that there are individuals that have challenged doing this? Well, no shame, no condemnation. It is because they are identified with a belief in mind. That is why it can be challenging. The belief is in the subconscious mind. And in the initial stages of applying this, it could be experienced as challenging. That's why we apply auto-suggestion and or emotional release or any modality to release identification to that particular belief. One of the ways that I have been mentioning is be still and know that I am. Stillness in that particular moment. That way, we do not reinforce that particular belief cycle. Now, this is very valuable for the observer effect. Again, the observer effect highlights the relationship between the observer and the observed. I like to say one with the outer experience so that we can change our relationship to the outer experiences within by relating it ideally from the premise of our vision, being that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So the feedback loop that appears is something that is helpful for us. An individual may have a fight or flight or freeze response in relation to the feedback loop. Here we're saying the feedback loop is our friend, bringing awareness to the belief that has been identified with in the subconscious mind. Now, as these limiting, restrictive, inauthentic, untrue beliefs are released, what I'm speaking of here becomes easier and easier, which is one of the reasons when I share in our group, it is considerably easier, very easy, effortless, for me to reach out to five new contacts a day now whether it be personal life or business life. Easier, in contrast to when I first started this journey. And that's normal, because there was identification to beliefs that was generating resistance, fear, indecision, doubt. Emotions were related to, in a way, where I could say anxiety or something like that. By understanding that you are that who is aware of the emotions, the thoughts, the beliefs in mind, it becomes easier and easier as you continue to reach out to more people each day, both reaching out to the people each day as well as being aware of what you are relating to prior, during, and after the contacts. Through reflections, cause and effect reflections. Prior to the interactions, during the interactions, after the interactions, you are able to see clearly what beliefs are identified with so they may be released. You also, as a result of doing so, find it easier to be aware real-time, active listening, aware of body language, aware of the feedback loop, and also number four, which is key for wonderful, harmonious relationships, be it business or personal life. 
family life, etc. Whatever kind of relationship. And that is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and regulate one's emotions effectively as well as the emotions of other people. To navigate social interaction, cultivate relationships, and make appropriate harmonious decisions in a harmonious way that benefits all parties involved. Emotional intelligence. We develop emotional intelligence by being present to the nuances of the conversation, the emotionality, the emotions of your individual self, the emotions of their individual self, and relating it ideally to the fact that all is one, ultimately, and who they truly are, who you truly are, is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Through emotional relatability, emotional intelligence, we're able to bring that interaction, that conversation, that relationship into a mutual harmony. And so the observer, you being the observer of, assumes the responsibility for the relationship by being aware of the emotions during the interaction, and relating ideally accordingly. Why is that? Because based on what we relate to the experience determines what appears next. Number five, be aware of confirmation bias. Now, the individual based on belief identification in mind, particular belief identification in mind, whether they are aware of it or not, may seek out information that confirms experiences, that confirms their existing beliefs in mind, whether they be helpful or not. It is apparent in the interactions as you acknowledge that you are the observer of the thoughts, emotions, behaviors, etc., the outer expressions of life. You are the observer of, and there is a relationship. The question is, is it from the premise of being who you are, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, to facilitate a wonderful, harmonious relationship? Or is it from the premise of a belief identified with in mind that is untrue to being who you are? Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And so we are aware of this by reflecting upon this conversation here by observing what is happening now, as now is where all the power is. So what do you relate to now in interaction with the other person, which determines what appears next? And then after the experience, to determine any kind of recurring patterns, which reinforce that particular belief, let's say, if it was an untrue belief. By simply bringing awareness to the belief, the belief is released. Once you acknowledge that a belief identified with is not true to who you truly are, it is obvious and it is released. And if the belief appears to persist, understand, that there may be persistent identification to that belief in the subconscious mind, which the unseen power takes that belief and externalizes it for you in some shape or form as the outer expressions of life, continuous patterns in relationships, whether you consider them to be ideal or not. If they're not ideal, no shame, no condemnation. Apply auto-suggestion or 
any kind of modality that works for you. I find that if I use a few modalities, emotional release, self-talk, auto-suggestion, being still, a few of them, again, again, and again, they tend to work more effectively for me. They also become easier and easier to apply. Prior, when I would repeat an auto-suggestion for a number of times, eventually transformed to, I can suggest something to myself, to reimagine the experience differently, in an ideal way, a lot easier with an auto-suggestion now. Consider mastery on using your mental tools, whatever they may be. I've been practicing auto-suggestion since 2004 in relation to, here we're talking about interactions, all areas of life. I learned it from Thinking Grow Rich. The two chapters, auto-suggestion and subconscious mind. It was the first time in my life that I realized that what was persisting in appearances was the result of identification to beliefs that were stored in the subconscious mind. And through auto-suggestion, I may release identification to those untrue beliefs. Then, mind became more purified, and it becomes easier and easier to apply this real time, being aware of in interactions, and knowing where it is going to go next based on what we are imagining in relation to, or we could say giving gratitude to in the conversation. For example, in sales, a prospect may give a number of objections. That's fine. No shame, no condemnation. Where are the opportunities to transmute those objections into products, services, different ways of communicating that will facilitate the realization that the product or service is beneficial for them? Where are there opportunities to optimize the product or service based on what they're sharing? Now, let's apply this through the flow process as articulated in the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Another reason why I recommend being as you are Making flow a priority, relaxing into the flow. Let's talk about relaxing into the flow. I recommend my flow-based life series. I'll link in the description to it. Number one, clear goals at an abstract and granular level. So at an abstract level, we have a vision. The vision is whatever our definite chief is. Certain amount of income goal per month, yearly income goal, whatever it is. And then you have granular goals, such as five new contacts a day. Now, during the interactions, and also prior and after the interactions, but we'll focus more on during the interactions, we have immediate reporting and feedback, which again, includes active listening, body language, feedback loop, emotional intelligence, and awareness of confirmation bias. Real time, we step into the interaction, engage in our process, whatever it is that is your process. I recommend books like Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. My entrepreneurial program, I talk about my process when it comes to consultative selling. And again, this can be not only applied for sales, also other communications in business personal life, family, etc. So, during the conversation, we orient the experience in a mutually harmonious way from the vision in relation to the experiences. That's the feedback. That's what's being reported. And it's what we're relating to the experiences that determines what appears next. Now, a nice harmony between challenge and skill. If it's too challenging to say, 
five prospects a day or five new contacts a day. Do one. And even that can be broken down into steps. First step, I'm going to send the text message and say hi. The next step, I'm going to ask them if they're available to jump on a phone call. The next step, and the next step, and next step, so on. If something is perceived of as too challenging, bring down its importance, the belief that is generating that particular perception of challenge to that degree through self-talk. Talk yourself into it, step by step. Then you're in the flow, in the interactions, and you'll notice that actions and awareness become one. You become one with the experience. And everything happens in a nice flow-based, effortless way. You end up saying things that you might have never thought that you would say before, yet it works out ideally. I trust you've had these experiences before. In this video, we're encouraging it to a higher degree. Also, what you may notice, distractions are no longer there. Fear, doubt, and indecision tapers away. That's because in that particular moment, actions and awareness become one. Another way of saying this, living meditation, as we discussed in Tuesday's video, I recommend watching it. We said the individual I relaxes and rests assured with the all. I and the Father are one, which is experienced then as no identification with fear-based, doubt-based, indecision-based beliefs, distraction-based beliefs. We may even experience time distortion. Time may seem to speed up and slow down. All of that happens naturally to facilitate an ideal, harmonious relationship. And so the activity and the person becomes autotelic. Now, as you continue to repeat this daily or more so each week, number of days per week, increasing frequency, mind is purified. This is a way of living meditation, real-time mind purification. As mentioned, you are always meditating. And why would I say that? Well, like we mentioned in Tuesday's video, and so thus I'll emphasize it again. The entire experience and phenomena of life is a meditation. The world first appeared to you and persists to appear the way it does to you based on identification. Notice this. If you cling to appearances, they appear to cling to you. If you dissolve identification, the appearances disappear. The appearances of the world are the effects of the one universal cause and substance of the entire phenomena of life. That I am. The all that knows all, sees all, animates all, and appears as all that appears through, as we say in our Neville Goddard conversations, prayer. Matthew 6.6 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. That is also referring to the observer effect. You are praying when you relate to the experience. That's what prayer is. Prayer is our relationship to experience. It is calling upon the unseen as though it is seen, and then the unseen becomes seen. Based on pure observation, pure observation, I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment in relation to this experience in relation to this appearance. And if you're an entrepreneur, sales professional, as a result of applying this, you have a wonderful, lavish, steady, dependable income, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. 
you could say, by remaining as I am in the divine center, I'm able to relate to experiences from the premise of being who I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and relate thus ideally to experience, to relationships, to appearances from the premise, thus experiencing more of that gratitude everywhere I go in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as a flow-based journey to actualizing my vision. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.